Well, as the birds fly down to the Big Easy to take on the league-surprising Saints, it sounds like A.J. Brown could be out yet another week. But now, C.J. Gunner Johnson has missed practice and, according to the Birds head coach, is in jeopardy of not playing against his former team, leaving this Eagles rookie in line to get a significant role increase on Sunday. Oh, and the Birds' defensive line, obviously, it's got to get better, and Jalen Carter thinks he's the guy to do it. I'm Thomas Mott. This is The Thomas Mott Show. <laughs> The big difference between the Birds' first game versus the Green Bay Packers and their devastating Week 2 loss versus the Atlanta Falcons has created kind of a confusing dilemma heading into the Big Easy on Sunday afternoon. On one hand, the Birds' defense gave up 29 points in a win versus that vaunted Jordan Love Packers offense, and yet all anyone could talk about afterwards was Jalen Hurts' turnovers. Fast forward then to last Monday night, and the Birds' defense only gave up 22 to Atlanta, yet Vic Fangio's unit has been ripped up and down for their extremely poor performance all night long, especially on the Falcons' game-winning drive. And while last week I asked you guys to correctly predict Jalen Hurts' stat line in terms of yards, touchdowns, and interceptions in my comment section before the Week 2 game to win a free Thomas Macho t-shirt pictured here, no one got close. I know it's difficult. I do normal giveaways during the week, but this one's always fun. If you can guess Jalen Hurts' exact stat line, yards in terms of passing, touchdowns, and interceptions in the comment section below, I'll give one of you guys who guesses it right a t-shirt later on next week. Now, Hurts and that Bird's offense, they were generally regarded as pretty strong in their showing versus the Falcons' defense, despite scoring 13 less points than the week prior in Brazil. Hence, again, the very interesting dilemma we have going into week three. Which version of the 2024 Eagles are we actually going to see versus, again, the surprise Surprising, shocking, really, really good 2-0 New Orleans Saints. Well, for one, you're going to be shorthanded most likely yet again, as A.J. Brown missed practice on Friday, still dealing with that hamstring, and I would say is an uber long shot to play versus the Saints. Also, throw in now safety A.C.J. Garner Johnson, who missed practice on Friday and is seemingly unlikely to play on Sunday, despite the Birds head coach trying to be a little mysterious about his status in his final press conference before flying to New Orleans. You know, he tweaked something yesterday. I won't get into the specifics, obviously, but, um, you know, we'll see how today goes. Is there still a chance A.J. plays on Sunday? Yeah, well, again, we got some time. We'll see how today goes. We'll see how the, the rest of the, you know, we got, we got today, we got a little bit of tomorrow before, and, and obviously... Sunday before we can make that have to make that decision and um, I know he's working I know mean, both guys are working their butts off to try to get back and while we won't officially know whether or not Gunnar Johnson will play versus old team until probably sometime on Sunday morning CJ DJ declined to speak to the media in the birds locker room on Friday but did say in passing quote see a Sunday as he packed his bags maybe a good sign I don't know drop a like down below if you're hopeful Gardner Johnson can play versus his former team the Saints on Sunday afternoon still though what if Gardner Johnson can't go. Like, who plays safety with number eight out? Well, I think there are a few options. Like, one, move Avante Maddox back to safety, like he kind of did all training camp long, move Quinn Mitchell to the nickel, and let Isaiah Rogers finally start on the outside. That option makes sense, but for some reason, I don't think Fangio's going to do it. What I think is going to happen is Quinn stays on the outside, you move Maddox to safety, and let Cooper DeGene come in and play the nickel. And this might actually work pretty well. Like, the Eagles' biggest issue so far in defense has obviously been stopping the run. Like, they simply cannot do it. And teams have known this, and yet have still run three wide receiver sets against the Birds in running downs, forcing Avante Maddox to be on the field in his nickel spot and try and defend the run. If DeGene takes over the nickel spot, he's already so much better of a box defender than Maddox, especially against the run, he might be able to turn the scales back in the Eagles' favor and at least help slow down Alvin Kamara. The problem, of course, is this is a massive if, like if DeGene is actually good, because DeGene, of course, is still a rookie and missed most of the preseason and training camp and is clearly still learning. Would he be ready for such a big role increase come Sunday afternoon? Well, I guess his head coach, if you take him at his word, thinks he might. He continues to, to impress as he's out there as far as, you know, Starting with his special teams abilities, he made a really good play in special. You guys weren't out there still, but made a really good play in special teams yesterday uh, in practice that was showed in front of the team today. Uh, and um, you know he's he's really had some good reps with the defense. He has some he ha he gets you know he he gets reps with the defense and he also gets reps on scout team. And so he, he's just you know I think he's been stringing together practice after practice after practice and our confidence is continuing to grow in him because uh, we know he's a good football player and uh, you know I know he wants to be he wants to be out there on the field and uh, contributing to this team. <laughs> 
I think Dejean gives you a shot, right? Avante Maddox has been up and down in coverage, but extremely bad in run defense, and you need help topping the run. And so maybe Cooper Dejean, with his ability, especially at Iowa, to be a great run stopper at the nickel spot, can again tilt the kind of run stopping ability in your favor just enough to slow down the Saints? I don't know. I'm still excited to see the potential of Dejean continuing to get a more increased role this Sunday. Still, though, this is all very hypothetical. The Saints are averaging 405 yards per game and averaging 45.5 points per game a whole nine points more than the number two scoring team in the league, which is the Arizona Cardinals. But I guess if you want to try and be a little positive, the Saints' two blowout wins came against the worst team in the league in Carolina and then the Dallas Cowboys, who Eagle fans, of course, we know seems to be pretty overrated this year. There is a world where the Birds kind of go into Sunday, play their best game, and win a high-scoring knife fight in New Orleans and get out of there at 2-1. and one. It's unlikely. I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but let's just hope that that's actually the case and the Birds score enough points and just get one or two good stops on defense, maybe an interception, and come out with the victory Sunday afternoon. Now, speaking of defense, we did hear from Jalen Carter on Friday afternoon for the first time since being suspended for that kind of odd opening drive against the Falcons, which he did address in a full-length clip I'm about to show you. But I do want to note he was asked about his play through the first two games, and his response was, quote-unquote, trash. That, of course, came right before this clip of him answering a couple of questions on the whole suspension. You know, I got to respect the decision. I came in late, and I got to take full responsibility for that. You know, uh, you know what happened? It won't happen again. Late for what? I was just woke up late, missed my line. That's all it was. You know, you said you walked through, you said, or, I'm sorry, I missed what it was. What were you late for? Oh, uh, I think uh, it was like team meeting. A couple minutes late for that. Yeah. So. For the first time, something like that happened? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, even, I don't want to be late like that, you know. Step on my phone, phone unplugged, that's all it was. You had to assess your performance so far. These first, first couple of weeks, so how would you describe how you played so far? Me being real, myself, trash. I feel like I'll be way better. Uh, got a lot of stuff I can work on with hands and being able to read the uh, formation of the O-line, read, running, passing, literally everything. So. Suspension or not, the Birds are definitely going to need the non-trash version of Jalen Carter in the worst way on Sunday because the entire defensive line the past two weeks, they've basically been non-existent. And everything with Fangio's defense starts up front. If the defensive line isn't playing much better, then Kamara's going to run for a buck fifty. Derek Carr is going to look comfortable in the pocket, and the Birds are going to get absolutely waxed. But the defensive line can just play even 10% better. Maybe they hold on and have a chance? Which is something Josh Davis and myself talked about during our Wednesday live show a couple of days ago. This defensive line mm -hmm. Any way possible, it has got to get a lot better. Uh, Devin White as an edge might be better than Huff. I, I've seen this, this whole idea that you got to get, you know, you play Devin White as pass rusher just to kind of, or in blitz situations. I don't know if, I mean, he's not Micah Parsons, right? So I don't know if I'm necessarily, um, <laughs> you know, exactly saying that. But the fact Devin White has been a healthy scratch the, the first week, whatever, second week to me is still very odd. You want to talk about being gaslit, and I keep saying that, but he was a LB1. The, the entire training camp. And to beat Devin White and to be like, okay, I took less money. I'm going to go to Philly. I'm going to revamp my career. And then you're told, you're the guy, you're the guy, you're the guy here. We're proving it. You're the guy, you're the guy, you're the guy. No. No, he's not the guy. Apparently, it's just, it's so bizarre to me. And the same goes for Isaiah Rogers. Rogers was cornerback two behind Darius Slay all mm -hmm. of training camp. He beat out Keely Ringo. He apparently went ahead and beat out, you know, Quinnell Mitchell as well. But for whatever reason, they play Quinn and Mitchell in the slot all training camp long. He plays very little outside cornerback in the end. And then whenever you have an outside cornerback injury, you, or I guess in terms of, of Isaiah Rodgers, you move him outside, which makes sense. But then when Rodgers comes back, you still don't put Quinn back to the place where you've been training him all training camp long. That's, it's so weird. Qu uh, Quinn Young is great. I love him. He's going to be a pro bowler, in my opinion, one of these years. Isaiah Rodgers, you got to know what you have. You, you've got to at least know what you mm -hmm. have. And if you're saying, well, they must know he's not good, why did he start almost every single training camp practice the final three weeks of training camp? It does not make any sense. It doesn't. I'm I'm right there with you. It's uh, the the only thing, but it's, it's they make him active. The, the, the argument that I was trying to figure out a way that makes work, that, that, uh, that you can make it work is, like okay, maybe the hand. It's it's just like it's kind of good enough where you absolutely had to have him. You can get him out there on the field, but they they don't want to rush it. They maybe. they don't want to re-injure anything. So maybe. let's just give it another week. We'll let uh, Q start. Uh, Keely Ringo can go in if you need him to. And then, like I say, worst worst case scenario if if Isaiah Rogers has to go in there, but it doesn't make sense to me. I'm I'm with you because he he's he seemed to prove that based off of camp and. You know, like Q did fine. There were a couple 
mistakes, certainly on the last drive there. Who's to say, you know, if, if Zay's in there, I'm not going to just automatically, oh, yeah, well, that for sure wouldn't have happened because the, the defensive line wasn't getting a pass rush. So <laughs> they still might have just right. marched right on down the field. But you right. just question and wonder that. Um, I don't know. It, it, there's there's several different areas where you just say, I guess, first off, it can't get worse than what it is now. Exactly. I mean, can it? Like, exactly. it, it, it's basically dead last in a lot of different categories already. And I mean, shout out to Anthony DeBona, but he was the first one I think that I saw brought uh, brought this up. But it is an interesting thought. If you really are struggling to get pass rush and how he's not willing to go out and make a move for somebody, the first move, or maybe he wants to see if the internal guys can do something before he makes a move. Sure. It's it's not out of the question that all of a sudden you say, hey, Zach Bond, we had you as the off-ball linebacker. We're going to move you to edge because nobody else can get any pressure. Let's just see if that works. Why not? And then, you know, is it Devin White that steps up there now? Or is it a situation where you move to a Jeremiah Trotter Jr.? Who knows? Because you could go with someone else there. But if you're not getting any pressure, say what you will about Devin White, but he's been a good blitzing linebacker. So, I mean, heck, let's do something and yeah. move some guys around. So, you know, I don't know. You keep coming back to questions of, you felt like there was these were going to be guys to make plays and at least have some sort of role on this team, specifically with the defense. But so far, two weeks in, you haven't seen anything. Now I know that Fangio probably will be, you know, a little bit uh, slower or maybe more patient with saying like, "Oh, we'll give, give it time. It's going to be okay." And blah blah. It'll be curious to see what he says in the press conference tomorrow. But ultimately, yeah, the, with where it's at, I mean, things are broken. So either. We need to see some change very, very quickly with the current guys, or let's start playing some different guys at, at, at different spots, move them around to get at least a little bit more fire intensity. Thomas Booker, give him some more reps because heck, it doesn't matter at this Jeez. point with JD. Yeah. Like it's crazy to say that, but whatever works at this point. And that's that's a miserable situation to be in. But you know, two weeks in, I think that ultimately that's where we're all looking at. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree in terms of the fact that, you know, if, if, if people don't want to get pressure, if, if Bryce Huff doesn't want to get pressure for whatever reason, if he's incapable of getting pressure, then sure, try somebody else out because it can't be much worse. And if we see the film, again, we are not film experts, but if we see the film, what the heck is Vic Fangio looking at? He has to see the same thing, right? He's got to be like, you know, I'm a genius defensive coordinator and I'm watching this. This is crazy bad. And you got to think there's got to be some changes coming up now. Maybe he is a little more stubborn in the fact he wants to hold out, hoping that Huff, $17 million, hoping Josh Sweat brought him back instead of Reddick, hoping Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis, they can figure things out and fine. But the wheels can unravel pretty quickly. And the next two weeks are, I mean, suddenly very difficult games. The Saints was not supposed to be difficult. The Bucks was going to be, you know, Baker in that offense. You know, the defense, Todd Bowles, not bad. But it was not supposed to be two undefeated football teams that looked very, very good. And suddenly you're staring down mm -hmm. the barrel of you could lose the next two. Theoretically, if the same defense shows up the next two weeks, you're going to lose those games. And then you're one and three and it's all hell breaks loose and people start freaking out and we just don't want to go there. So do Please something no. to 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 show us that something is going to be better than what we've seen the past couple weeks on defense. That's all I ask yep. for. So on paper, worst case scenario felt like it was going to be three and one, quite mm -hmm. honestly. Going worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a. Two you and know, two is like play. Please, I, I would, I'd be perfectly fine with two and two. You'd be perfectly fine. One and three still feels very much in play. Uh, I don't know. It's a uh, it's a different situation. Um, uh, Renard says you all said you had uh, the best roster in the NFC East. I still think we do. You think Dallas's roster is better? You think Dallas is much better overall? We still we have a much okay. better offense than Dallas. Yes. Yeah. The defense, NFC East toss up maybe. Like, if you want optimism, the NFC East is yeah. still there for the taking. We could be one and three at the bye, and you won't Ugh. be concerned. I mean, we'll be concerned, but you won't be like, oh, gosh, the NFC East is unwinnable. Like, we're right. just so far in hole. Sorry. Like, Dallas could very easily get beat by Baltimore this week coming up. So, you know, they're in a similar situation of maybe getting some losses early, and do they have some issues? Absolutely. They cannot run the ball. Certainly with Zeke Elliott, they can't run the ball. He, he is a immediate tackle can't break a tackle to save his life can't make anybody miss to save his life so they're a one-dimensional team and they got to be able to throw the ball but as soon as you see that all of a sudden hey saints what they're going to do or what they did curious to see baltimore but i would feel like it's going to be a similar situation not you know a blowout but a similar situation of kind of have their way on that side then you know th there's there's questions like there's questions all around the commanders okay yeah i mean you know you make some plays but ultimately like 
is that the answer there with Jane Daniels and that and that team there? You know, Not and then year. sure the Giants are just like move move on. <laughs> but they they are what they are so the nfc east is totally up for grabs I, I wouldn't back away from from that previous take now josh davis and myself will be live yet again for the eagles and saints game sunday afternoon starting around 12 45 12 50 p.m eastern time come hang out come watch the game with us we're gonna have a bunch of fun hit that subscribe button turn the notification bell that way you're notified when we go live i'm thomas mott let's just hope the birds win give me a go birds down below in the comment section this has been the thomas mott show <laughs>